Good morning, Bridge family. How's everyone doing this morning? It's a lovely day out, wouldn't you say? I'm going to invite everyone to stand with us. We're going to start our time in worship together. For those who are unaware, the lyrics to all the songs are on the back of the announcement sheet. So please do sing along. I'm never happy that we get to meet together in this beautiful day. Amen. Lift up our voices of praise together. Let's sing out. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than my unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. And I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder. You're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise, and death is defeated, the King is alive. Then I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah. I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. I raise a hallelujah. I fear you lost your hold on me. And I'm gonna see. In the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise, and death is defeated, the King is alive. And I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar. From the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. Come on, let's celebrate today that the king is alive. Amen. Let's lift our voice, sing out. Let's sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemy. Sing a little louder, louder than my unbelief. Sing a little louder, my weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder, heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder, in the presence of my enemy. Sing a little louder, louder than my unbelief. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Hallelujah this morning. So hallelujah, 
We praise your name, Jesus. Lord, be glorified, magnified in this place. Good morning, family. Happy Sunday. So good to be with you today. How many were looking forward to being in service all week? I know I was. Man, just to be in the presence of the Lord, right? Just to be able to experience the joy and the peace of God in this kind of a setting. Uh, we were created for this, right? We know that we were created to worship. We were created for fellowship. And that's why this has been so hard, I think, right, for so many uh, me included, just the isolation and feeling disconnected from the church family. So what a blessing and a privilege that, that we get to be together today. And uh, I just want to encourage you just to open your heart to what the Lord has for you. I, as I was praying for our service this morning, I saw as, as people were walking into this courtyard that just a lot of heavy weights were just falling off. You know what I mean? It was almost like it was just like you couldn't be out here and still carry the chains and the weights and could, could we just shake it off a little bit? Like just the, whatever it is from this week, the anxiety, the worry, the fear. I know people are, you know, nervous about this coming week. And, and we certainly need to be prayerful for our nation. We need to be prayerful for the inauguration that's going to be taking place. And, and knowing and re being reminded that God is on the throne. The Holy Spirit is not in shelter in place, right? Nobody has to stay at home restriction in heaven. God is moving. He's with us. He is for us. And there is power in our declarations. Do you believe that? There is power in our confessions. And, and I just want to encourage you with that, to know that, that Jesus told his disciples, he said, all authority has been given in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go. And as you go, I'm with you. So I want you to know that you have authority over the enemy that you have authority over the, the presence of darkness, that, that you have authority, that Jesus is the name that is above every name. He's, his is the name that is above every word, every concept, every disease, fear, anxiety, worry, whatever it might be, Jesus is on the throne. He is alive and well, and he's moving in our hearts, amen? And so today, I don't know what's gonna happen this week. I don't know if we're gonna be able to meet next Sunday, but I know I'm here. I know you're here. Just You can't smile, so just do your eyebrows a little bit like this because that's all I can really see. I know that you're here and God is with us. Amen. I want to read for you uh, from Psalm 42. It says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. Can I tell you that uh, I'm learning that when I'm feeling in a place where I'm not at ease, when I'm feeling the burden or the weight of what's going on around me, when I'm discouraged, when I'm frustrated, when I'm at, anybody just been irritable and agitated lately? It's honestly, it's because my soul is thirsty. Yeah, there's things that are going on around me, but the only thing that's going to satisfy is being in the presence of the Lord. Amen. So, so just know that and, and know that, oh, wow. Okay, so that's an indicator. Holy Spirit's trying to get my attention that it's not about these problems being resolved in front of me in the natural. This is a spiritual issue that I need to press in to the living water and receive the, the water that changes everything inside of me, that satisfies my soul in a way that nothing else can. It says, where can I go and meet with my God? My tears have been my food day and night. While people say to me all day long, where is your God? That's a con common theme right now, right? If God is so good, why is everything else so bad? Well, God is good, and he is on the throne, and he is sovereign, and, and this time is going to pass, and God is coming again soon. Amen? He says, these things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. David is lamenting what he's missing about being able to go into the temple and be kind of in that, that familiar place in the Lord's presence. How many have felt that way over the last year? We all have. But listen to what he says. Verse 5, why, my soul, are you downcast? 
why so disturbed within me? He's, he's checking himself. He's saying, wait a minute. Yeah, I don't get to do the thing that I, I, I love the most to do. I, I'm not able to be in the temple right now. I'm not able to lead the processional right now. People around me are doubting that God is real. My life right now is challenged. But let me be reminded of this. Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Yet, I will yet praise him. Satan is defeated. Praise him in the storm. If you're in a storm right now, if you're, if you're facing challenges right now, if, if you feel like you're, in an, you're overwhelmed by what's going on around, now is the time to press in and praise. Praise him in advance of what he's going to do. Prophetically thank God for what he's going to do, even though you don't see it yet. Amen? And so I just want to encourage you today. Whatever you need, God is the answer. You need to worship, worship. You, you need to go back for prayer. We're going to release our ministry team right now to the back. If you need prayer, go back for prayer. If you need to just sit quietly in the Lord's presence or you want to kneel, we got some comfy astroturf. If you want to come out of your chair and just stand in the front, whatever you need to do today, do it. But press in. Don't let anything hold you back from the amazing work that God wants to do in your heart today. Amen. Let me pray for you. Jesus, thank you that you are our ever-present help. You never leave us. You never forsake us. You never will. Thank you that you're with us even now, Lord. God, I pray that you would restore to each person in this, in this place the joy of their salvation, that there would be a renewal that would wash over us today in Jesus' name. That, Lord, winds of refreshing, waves of refreshing, fresh oil and new wine would be poured out upon thirsty souls, dry and thirsty souls today. And that, Lord, as we press in beyond the fray, as we fight through like the woman did who had been sick all of her life through the crowd to touch the hem of your garment, I'm so grateful to know, Lord, that your promise says that we will find you because we have sought for you with all of our heart. Meet us in this place today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, if you're in need of prayer, please go to the back. Our team is there. They love you. They've been praying for you all week. And uh, let's continue to worship. I'm sure Pastor Chris has already mentioned that the lyrics are on the back of the announcement sheet uh, in case you don't know the songs by heart yet. God bless you, family. I love you. your body and your blood that shed for me. This is how I fight my battle. I'll sing that again. There's a table. There's a table that you've prepared for me. In the presence of my enemy. It's your body and your blood that shed for me. This is how I fight my battles. And I believe you've overcome and I will lift my song of praise for all you've done. And this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. In the valley, you know the joy with me. Surely your goodness and your mercy follow me. So my weapons are praise and thanksgiving. 
This is how I fight my battles. And I believe you've overcome it. I will lift my song of praise for all you've done. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my fight at your name, Jesus, We're calling on your name, but it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm all around the sky. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my Your word says that you will never leave us or forsake us, God. Lord, we know victory is in your hands, Lord. Lord, we know nothing can stand before you, God. You're so much greater, so much stronger than anything we face, God. And you are always close by. Well, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. Love is all around the sky. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Come on, see that out. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. 
It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Love is all around us. We want to feel a touch from you, Lord. Wrap us in your arms today. Wrap us in your arms today. Lord, show us you are here. Show us you are here and you always will be. Love is all around. Love is all around. just want to sit here at your feet, caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. I'm not here for blessing. Jesus, you don't owe me anything, more than anything that you can do. I just want you. I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sing another song and take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda. I'm sorry. I forgot to sure enough and take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. Caught up in this holy moment, I never want to leave. I'm not here for blessing. Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything. I just want you. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. When I've just gone through the motions, I'm sorry. When I just sang another song, take me back to where we started. I open up my heart. I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda. 
I'm sorry when I forgot to join up to take me back to where we started. Open up my heart to you. Cut up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. Cut up in this holy moment. Never want to leave. I'm not here for blessing. Jesus, you don't know me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do, I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. Let's lift our hands and worship. Close your eyes. Set aside every distraction. Nothing matters more than this moment right now. Tell him, nothing else will do, God. I just want you. I need you. I just want you. Nothing else. Come on, tell him, nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you. I think too often, friends, uh, we can get caught up in wanting the, the gift more than the giver. We want answers. We want miracles. We we need things to change, and th- those are, that's all good. But don't don't miss something much greater for something that's temporarily good. I want the giver. Because if I have him, I have everything I need. Amen. I, I want the giver today. I, I, I don't need my life to be perfect. I just need Jesus. We sing in this, in this song, take me back to where we started. Could you just close your eyes just for a moment and just reflect on the day that Jesus saved you and what he saved you from? 
and what he's continued to save you from and deliver you from and the work that he's done in your life. Remember the joy unspeakable and full of glory. In those moments, all, all we wanted was him. Amen. We didn't need any gifts. We didn't need anything to be better. We just needed him. We just, we would linger. People had to kick us out of the church. We're closing. And now we can't get people here. It's not about the gifts. Those are wonderful, and he's more gracious than we deserve. Today, it's about the giver. Amen. So as we sing this again, could I encourage you just to let yourself get lost, caught up as we're singing, just caught up again in his presence, in his glory, in his love, in his care, in his holiness, in his majesty, in his beauty. Nothing else. Amen. Come on, Chris, let's sing that. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I'm caught up in your presence. I just wanna see. for blessing Jesus you don't know me anything more than anything that you could do I just want you caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet, caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. No, I'm not here for blessing. Jesus, you don't know me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. just right now in our own words just tell the Lord that we want nothing else Lord God just you just want you Father We thank you so much, Lord, for who you are, Father. Lord, we praise you in all your majesty, all your goodness, Lord, all your greatness. God, we thank you so much that you choose to lavish your love upon us, Lord. That you are such a gracious Lord. 
who loves us so unconditionally, Father God. We're so thankful for your presence, Lord God. Not just here, Lord God, but everywhere we go, Lord. In our homes, at our workplace, Lord God. We know that you are with us, Lord. And we want nothing else but to be with you. We praise you this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name. The Lord is good, amen? And go ahead and you can clap for that if you want. Go ahead and take a couple moments to hide to the people around you. And we'll come together. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to invite you to take a seat. If your seat is somewhere that is difficult to see because of this glorious sunshine, please know you are allowed to move. So if you want to take a couple minutes now to shift your chair so that you're not blinded by the light. And we're going to get into it. Ah, such glorious weather though. Praise God. Last week was a little chilly for those of us who braved it. Well, it is always an absolute honour to get to preach at the bridge. I'm Pastor Teresa and I'm looking forward to continuing our Freedom Series. And a special greetings to our Bridge family watching online. Uh, I, I know that you are being encouraged, equipped, and maybe even challenged by this series. So thank you for tuning in each week. For our Freedom Series this month, we've been using as our core biblical text that wonderful section in Luke 4. And uh, those of you with the Version app now would be a good time to go to events, and find the bridge there. And this section in Luke 4, it's where Jesus stands up in the synagogue and he reads the words of the prophet Isaiah, or Isaiah, if you're in the US, which I guess I am, <laughs> and declares that this is his ministry. And it isn't some future event, some future thing. It is starting now. So let's read that passage again in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Last week, Pastor Victoria talked about freedom for the brokenhearted. Today, I'm going to focus on Jesus' mandate of recovery of sight for the blind. This is a really interesting verse. Uh, I'm kind of glad I got this one. And I don't know if you're like me, but when the Old Testament is quoted in the New Testament, I like to look back and, and find it. Uh, in most Bibles, there's, there's normally an asterisk or a little mark that lets you know that something's being quoted from another section of the Bible. So if you, like me, then turn, in this case, to Isaiah 61, verse 1, you see this prophecy from Isaiah. But the phrase, recovery of sight for the blind, isn't actually part of it. So what's going on here? Is Jesus adding to Isaiah's original prophecy? Okay, stay with me while I detour just a little bit. So the Old Testament in our Bibles is translated from the original Hebrew. However, in the time of Jesus, the majority of people actually spoke Greek. This was the trade language of the Roman Empire. And even a lot of the Jewish people didn't speak Hebrew. So a few centuries earlier, 70 Jewish scholars had translated the Hebrew Bible into Greek. And this Greek Old Testament is called the Septuagint. 
Septuagint comes from the Latin word 70 because there were 70 scholars that did the translation in 70 days. Very neat. I've included a little note about it in the YouVersion app for those who are interested. So when Jesus stood up to read the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, he was reading the Greek translation. And this is what I love about God and the Bible. He is so amazing at making sure we don't miss a thing. And we can learn from these discoveries what is important to God. Recovery of sight for the blind is an intentional element of freedom that the Holy Spirit doesn't want us to miss. This line is important because it is about two areas of Jesus' teaching and ministry where we see him bringing freedom. The recovery of sight for the physically blind and the focus on those who are spiritually blind. Let's first just talk about Jesus' healing and miracles ministry, which saw so many people receiving restored sight. And I know we all love a miracle story. I mean, I, I, I just, they're so encouraging. They fill me full of faith. But I'm not sure if we quite appreciate how big a deal this actually was. Physical blindness in the biblical period was quite common. And the suffering of the blind person was made worse by the common belief that the affliction was due to sin. So not only was the person impaired, they couldn't see, but everyone thought they'd brought it upon themselves. And the reality was there was basically no treatment if you suffered from diseases of the eye or blindness. There weren't any antibiotics. There was no effective surgical procedures. There were no eyeglasses. So whether the blindness the person was suffering was congenital from birth or whether, and more likely, it was caused by an infection or an injury, there was no hope. They weren't expected to ever get their vision back. And to add insult to injury, because the person was seen to have sinned, they were often excluded from society. They received no support or welfare, and most became beggars. And this is how we see the blind depicted in the stories of Jesus. I mean, how many stories are there of blind people begging along the sides of the roads, calling out to Jesus or, or asking for help? So when Jesus declared that he had come to restore sight to the blind, there is perhaps no greater evidence of his compassion and his power than in his willingness and his ability to heal those who lived in perpetual darkness and hopelessness. I'm not sure if, if we fully comprehend what a breaking in of the kingdom of God into the earth, Jesus healing the blind was. We've got the benefit of 2,000 years of hearing the stories of Jesus we even have witnessed healings and miracles in our own lives or the lives of people we know. Plus, we we're, we're kind of take it for granted about medical breakthroughs and all sorts of things. Uh, I remember being a child and there was still so much talk about the first cochlear ear implant in the late 70s when deaf people could hear for the first time. Just amazing. But in the biblical period, this wasn't a reality. It wasn't even a possibility. This is what drew the crowds to Jesus. They were witnessing things they had never seen before, never even dreamed of. And Jesus was not only restoring people's physical health and well-being, but he was restoring their dignity and restoring them back into society. Because Jesus brings freedom to every part of a person's life. And today, Jesus is still freedom for those who seek him. So this core text from Luke 4, 
where Jesus proclaims he will bring recovery of sight to the blind is a literal message. He will literally restore people's sight. He has come to not just declare, but to demonstrate on earth as it is in heaven. But praise God, because Jesus, he doesn't just care for our bodies. I love that he cares about our physical well-being, but he also cares about our souls. And so we see that in the translation of blind throughout the Bible, blind often also refers to spiritual blindness. And the spiritual blindness that God wants to deal with is not just of those who don't know him. The blindness of those who don't know God is a reality. The Bible tells us this. Uh, we see it in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, where it says, Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. But interestingly, the blindness that God most frequently deals with is that of his own people. And this is where today's sermon gets a little challenging. Those who are in covenant with him, but have stopped being obedient to him, and even worse, presume to act on his behalf without actually seeing or hearing what God is showing and saying. Listen to this charge against the people of Israel in Isaiah 42, which in my uh, Bible, it has the heading, you know how they put little headings in? Israel blind and deaf. Isaiah 42, starting at verse 18. Hear you deaf, look you blind and see. Who is blind but my servant and deaf like the messenger I send? Who is blind like the one in covenant with me? Blind like the servant of the Lord. You have seen many things, but you pay no attention. Your ears are open, but you do not listen. Whew, what a reprimand. God's people are the ones who are supposed to be in covenant with him. Covenant is, is a, a promise. And God's people are the ones who, who are meant to lead others to know and to serve him. But they've failed. They've become, become blind to who God is and what it means to be living for him and in relationship with him. And sadly, it's not just in the Old Testament where the people of God are accused of spiritual blindness. Oh, Jesus, don't you love him? He really sticks it to the Pharisees on several occasions. Whew. And uh, we see one such example in John chapter 9, starting at verse 39. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him uh, heard him say this and asked, what are, are we blind to? Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. In this passage, Jesus has just healed a man born physically blind. And, you know, it seems kind of obvious, but blind people know that they're blind. It's not a surprise to them. And they know that they need help. And in this period of time, the only help that they could get was from God. In comparison, the religious leaders believe they can see, but they are in fact blinded to God by their own ideas and desires. Let me give you one more example. And uh, uh, I'm gonna shorten this one. In Matthew 23, Jesus gets stuck into the Pharisees again. Uh, and so I'm just going to read the highlights for you. Uh, Matthew 23, verse 16. Woe to you, blind guides. 17. You blind fools. Verse 19. You blind men. Verse 24. You blind guides. Verse 25. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees. You hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and dish. But inside, they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first clean 
the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside also will be clean. <sighs> exactly. Yikes. It is very comforting, or at least to me, when we read these scriptures, we give a little sigh of relief. Whew. Well, I'm glad I'm not a Pharisee. But we should be careful of dismissing Jesus' focus on spiritual blindness and hypocrisy too quickly. The Pharisees are often, and sometimes rightly so, demonized in our reading of the Bible. But the historical reality was that many of them were sincere people of faith. They had dedicated their lives to serving God and were following what they thought was the right way to honour God. We know that some of them even went on to become followers of Jesus. So the problem is less in the job title, but the fact that the people of God, whether Pharisee or regular person, are meant to be the ones who know God. We're meant to be the ones who know God's word and who follow God. Instead, their sight had become clouded. And this should be a warning to us. Especially in these times when some Christians are so vocal in what they believe is right. Their bumper sticker screams, Jesus saves. But in fact, their spiritual vision seems to have become blurred by tradition, whiteness, politics or geography. Spiritual blindness is not something that happens to us overnight. It is a gradual process that at first we don't even notice. It creeps up on us. And if we're not careful, we can get used to being spiritually impaired and we learn to live that way. As someone who wears glasses, I know these probably look like sunglasses right now, but it's the transition lenses in the sunlight. I, I can clean my glasses in the morning and I go all day. I think I'm seeing fine. And then uh, me and Gavin, we decide to watch a movie, turn the lights down low. You know how it is. And, uh, but all of a sudden, with the change in light, I realise that my glasses are covered in smudges and specks from the day. I've, I've been looking through these glasses all day, probably looking around all the dirt all day. I never realised how bad it was. When we see the dirt on our lenses, metaphorical or literal, we have two options. We can leave it alone and say, I'll clean it later. I'm busy right now. I'm using them. I don't have time to deal with it. I can still see. Or we can grab our lens cloth Maybe you've got some spray and we can take a few seconds to clear things up. If we ignore the dirt, it's going to keep building up and it's going to be much more difficult and time consuming, consuming to clean in the future, as well as impeding our sight every waking second. So when the light of Christ has highlighted where we have become spiritually impaired, let us not hesitate to deal with it. Let's repent swiftly. Our God is quick to forgive. Let's be humbled before God and receive His full and fresh vision. St. Peter lists the qualities of a person with good spiritual sight. And I'm going to read the first verse last uh, and then we'll read what he says. So in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 9, Peter writes, But if you don't grow, you are like someone who is nearsighted or blind and you have forgotten that your past sins are forgiven. Well, I don't know about you, but I want to be someone who's growing. I, I don't want to be considered nearsighted or blind. So how do we avoid this? Well, Peter explains from verse 5. Do your best to improve your faith. You can do this by adding goodness, understanding, 
self-control, patience, devotion to God, concern for others and love. If you keep growing in this way, it will show that what you know about our Lord Jesus Christ has made your lives useful and meaningful. So our cure and preventative strategy for spiritual blindness is to keep our eyes fixed on God and to keep growing by His grace in goodness, understanding, self-control, patience, concern for others, and of course, love, the greatest of these. Don't know about you guys, but it's a little similar to the list of the fruits of the Holy Spirit, yeah? So we could almost say that good fruit is an indication of good sight. Let us be quick to acknowledge spiritual blindness. If we aren't aware of the dirt on our lenses, and like the glasses illustration, we often are unaware until our viewpoint or the light changes, then we need to make sure we are listening to those promptings of the Holy Spirit when he gives us that nudge maybe about something that we've been avoiding or not wanting to deal with. Maybe it's not that bad so we can put it off. Perhaps it's an attitude, a lack of self-control, a lack of concern or love for a person or a group of people. Who you find yourself disparaging or yelling at at the TV or on social media could be a hint. We also need people in our lives who love us enough to point out when we might be getting some smudges on our vision. And we need to be humble enough to receive that and to be obedient to do something about it. I'm not saying this is easy or enjoyable, but it's what our Lord wants for us to be free Make sure that these people have got good spiritual sight themselves. Good fruit, good sight. Otherwise, it's just going to be a case of the blind leading the blind. And I think this is what got the Pharisees in trouble. They all started with good intentions, but they were all blind in the same areas. And so they reinforced their own beliefs and attitudes. Jesus was so painful to them because he exposed the disobedience and the sin that none of them were even aware of anymore. Jesus has come to set us free. Hallelujah. Let us not allow our freedom to be diluted, polluted or manipulated. We want our spiritual sight to be completely free, to be illuminated by the light of Christ. As the old chorus goes, uh, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Some of you, I'm sure, know it. I love it. It says in one line that we want to see everything in the light of his glory and grace. Jesus declares still today, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim freedom of sight to the blind. Let's not worry about other people's vision. Let's make sure we've recovered our spiritual sight and that we're walking in that freedom through God's grace. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for your amazing grace that once we were blind, but now, praise Jesus, we can see. Keep our eyes fixed on you, that our spiritual sight would behold you in your glory and that we would see this world and ourselves as you see us. Forgive us, Lord, for letting our vision get clouded. Restore our sight by your Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.
Okay, I want you to enjoy, if enjoy is the right word, uh, some time talking with those around you. Feel free to shift your chairs and then we'll be back again with some announcements. God bless you, family.
sing, be still. Be still. All right, Bridge family. I hope that you enjoyed your time together talking through these questions. I'm sorry if you weren't able to get through them all. Sometimes when I don't get to the last question, I like to take my announcement sheet home or I save my version event and I just reflect on these questions in my time with the Lord in the mornings just to take that learning and that application a little bit deeper. And can we thank Pastor Teresa for such a good word? It was a good, challenging word Pastor Teresa, we needed it. It was good. Thank you for bringing it in courage and such honesty and vulnerability too. Those are the words that take us deeper as a community with each other and with God and our walk with him. So I want to share a couple things with you and then we're going to close our service in kind of an altar experience that Pastor Brian feels led to lead us in. Um, if you haven't already joined a connect group, I want to encourage you to please join. It is not too late. And I just believe that God wants to take us to that deeper place of knowledge in him. But there's such power in doing this walk with each other. And I just think this is a season of isolation and, and where people can just feel so alone. But you are not alone. And you are not called to walk on this journey with Jesus alone. And so if you haven't yet, if you've been considering it, if you feel like it's too late, it's not, please join. You can sign up on our website. How many of you have been participating in our 21 days of prayer and fasting with our Foursquare family? It's been such an awesome experience. And again, I want to encourage those who haven't been participating. It's not too late. I have found that even one day of prayer and fasting can do something with my perspective and my heart before the Lord. And so please do not let the enemy lie to you. Do not be discouraged if you haven't joined since the beginning. I believe that God has something for all of us at any stage in the experience. Also, if you've been with us this month, you know that our theme, and Pastor Teresa taught on it, is freedom for 2021. And I believe God is going to bring deep-seated, real lasting freedom to us all. And we've just been praying that over you. And we're excited to offer these journals at the Connection Center this morning and throughout the year to just help facilitate that growth and to keep that theme and that vision in front of you. These are sold for $15 each. They're at the Connection Center. If you won our first Sunday giveaway, we're sorry for the delay. We've been waiting for them. You know, COVID shipping delays. It is what it is, but we have them here. So please claim your free copy. Take that home today. And then for the rest of you, they're $15. And it also comes with a Bible reading plan for 2021. Come on, we gotta be people of the word, deeply rooted in the word so that we can have clear sight, clear vision for what God wants to do in front of us. So that's all I have to share with you, Pastor Brian, if you wanna come on up and lead us. Thank you. 
Let's stand together, family. If you're part of one of our connect groups, I want to encourage you to grab one of those journals, even just as a, something that you can consistently use each week to take notes. I know in the men's group, I'm encouraging the guys to take notes, sending follow-up emails, things that they can be writing down, reflecting on. Um, I think journaling really is, uh, it's, it's a physical expression of a desire for more of the Lord. It's, it's, a, it's like when we're writing, we're taking a step of faith that like we want to go to that next level. We're not just content to hear, but by writing it out, by reflecting and, and having really a, a conversation with the Lord, I think we go from hearing only to doing also. Amen. Well, I was so grateful for Pastor Teresa's word today. And uh, as I was just listening to her, I felt like, you know what? I think we would be remiss in not taking an opportunity today, each one of us individually, to, to come before the Lord today. And do you know that repentance is, is a gift? What a blessing it is that we get to come before the Lord and, and ask for forgiveness and repent, meaning that we're saying, God, I've been kind of going in a wrong direction today. I'm turning 180 degrees and I'm going to go back towards you, what you want to do for me. Amen. And, and so today, I want to just encourage you just to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. This is not a, a message of condemnation, but it's appropriately a message of conviction. And conviction is a blessing because it keeps us from being stuck. It keeps us from staying blind. And maybe today, in using Pastor Teresa's analogy of, of glasses, because I, I wear glasses too, maybe the smudge is fear. Maybe the smudge is anger. Maybe the smudge is, is offense and, and forgiveness is what's going to cleanse it as we draw close to the Lord. Maybe the smudge has been that, man, it's just been a long time since I've even thought about my spiritual sight. I've, I've even thought about how my relationship with the Lord and, and to do some necessary inventory in my heart. Where am I with the Lord? Am I walking around kind of just blurry even though I know Jesus and if we are today's the day why would we leave the same right and so I want to encourage you today I'm going to lead us in prayer and I just want to give you a moment to be able to reflect on where you're at today with the Lord you're never too far away there's nothing you can do that would separate you from his love he is so willing just to come and wash us and renew us. And I've felt like all day there's been that anointing of God wanting to renew our joy, renew our spirits in him today. Amen. On this beautiful day that could be such a changing moment for us if we'll press into the Lord and not ignore what the Holy Spirit is wanting to do. So let me invite you to bow your heads and close your eyes. And this is really just a moment between you and the Lord. But I want to I want to ask you right now just to be sensitive Holy Spirit, right now, we just soften our hearts before you. Knowing that you love us unconditionally, completely. And your plans for us, God, are only for our good, for a hope and a future. And you want to restore what the enemy has, has robbed us of. You want to restore what this world around us has just this smudge, this, just this heaviness, this junk. You want to cleanse us again afresh today. So friend, right where you are, just be attentive to the Holy Spirit's voice, right in your own heart. What is he, what is he touching on? So gently, so lovingly, what, what is he sig signaling to you? This is where, this is where I want you to repent. This is where I want to bring change. And when you just, right where you are, just in the quiet of your own heart, would you just, would you receive that and would you acknowledge that? If you want to pray out loud, if you want to just pray in, in your mind, in your spirit, it's okay. God hears you. He knows your heart. But just to say, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me, Lord, in this area where I've allowed these things to cloud my true vision, my spiritual sight. Forgive me and cleanse me, Lord. I repent and I run to you today. I come back to your plans and your purpose for my life. I receive the, the restoration that you're bringing even now to, to my spirit.
to my soul. Wash me and cleanse me and make me new today. We thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for your love for us. That even when we don't see it, even when we don't feel it, that you are working. Thank you for what you've done in our hearts today. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Amen. Come on, give Jesus a clap offering. Tell him thank you for the amazing time that we've had with him today. As you go, I want to encourage you that if you've leaving anything around, your snacks or your announcement sheets, grab those. You can throw those out on the way. And please don't leave without grabbing a journal. That's a great step of faith to kick our year off. Amen. Have a blessed day, guys, everybody. We love you so much.